Hello, welcome, Dr. Maya Kinzigler of Monarch Family Chiropractic. Welcome to our uh, workshop um, on understanding your circadian rhythms. Now, I don't think there will be anybody who will ever argue the importance of sleep. Um, and we're going to uh, start with the end in mind, right? What is it that we are hoping to get out of this workshop? And number one, if we understand the importance of sleep, we can start implementing it into uh, our life and our rhythm, which can result in a very different outcome when it comes to our health and longevity. And since I'm going to circle back to this at the end of this presentation, but because uh, daylight savings is coming, coming up in just a couple of weeks, I think it's important to understand the impacts of just one hour loss of sleep because this is what the researchers say, that um, following daylight savings, the overall rate of ischemic stroke was 8% higher during the first two days after a daylight savings time transition. People with cancer were 25% more likely to have a stroke after daylight savings time than during any other period. The risk was also higher for those over age 65 who were 20% more likely to have a stroke right after the transition. The following Monday after daylight savings, researchers have found that people get 40 minutes less of sleep, which may lead to greater negative health effects in the following days. Uh, I also know that um, the likelihood of motor vehicle accidents happening during daylight savings is um, increases as well. So um, when you look at a change in our rhythm, less sleep, we can see on a mass scale data that represents immediate impacts in our mental and physical well-being. Uh, so this conversation is absolutely vital. And let's go to our next slide here because uh, we're going to see how important uh, sleep can be. And when we improve our sleep, this is what research has shown. We see better skin health, a more youthful appearance, we see better emotional regeneration, better relationships and longevity. We see dis decreased risk of stroke and cardiovascular disease, fewer accidents, decreased pain, stronger bones, lower levels of inflammation, enhanced function of your immune system, lower risk of cancer and infection, balance within your hormones, a faster rate of weight loss, lower risk of Alzheimer's disease, cognitive decline, better memory. Now, who doesn't want these benefits? And really there's nothing that we need to add to or purchase or that's going to um, you know, need for us to go shopping. It is just really adjusting into a rhythm of better sleep. And that is what this workshop is about is really understanding uh, number one, your circadian rhythms. And uh, secondly, what you can do to make sure you support the most balance in your circadian rhythms. Uh, so just by getting better sleep, you can enhance all of these components. And these, uh, I got these statistics in a book called Sleep Smarter. Okay, so the main sleep drivers, you have natural internal processes that work together to one, number one, keep you awake when you need to be awake and allow you to sleep when you need to be asleep. Okay, so you have... <clears throat> the first internal process, which is a homeostatic sleep drive. This is, I want you to think about it like a balloon, but the pressure uh, that builds over time that tells your body, oh, it's time for sleep or it's time to be awake. And as we um, are moving through our day, the <clears throat> life that we experience and the level of stress that we experience can build that pressure up in our, in our, within our homeostatic sleep drive. And once we reach a maximum pressure, think about the balloon is totally filled up. That means that turns on this, this drive to start uh, allowing for sleep and um, just a tiredness to occur. Because when we sleep, that balloon deflates, okay? Uh, and then we have the circadian rhythm, which is your master clock that governs the rhythm of all of your body processes, including sleep and wakefulness, okay? So uh, let's talk about this homeostatic sleep pressure in a little bit more detail. So this is hooked to certain neurochemicals, which are byproducts of brain activity, specifically adenosine, 
which is the energy source for all living cells in our body. So adenosine is required um, to help us stay awake. So when it builds up in the brain, we are staying awake. And when it drains away, we get sleepy, we get tired. Uh, and so this neurochemical that is present within our brain and within our body uh, has a massive effect in terms of our home homeostatic sleep pressure. The more there is, the more we're awake, the less there is, um, the more we move towards sleep. And so when you think about caffeine, which is the most common way to keep ourselves awake, despite an ever-growing sleep balloon, right? Our balloon is starting to blow up, right? The homeostatic pressure is starting to tell our brain it's time to get tired, time to get sleepy. We've ex experienced, you know, um, stress levels that require us to rest and recover, okay? Uh, we take and drink caffeine, which is doing the opposite of that. So it starts to create in a biochemical battle with adenosine in the brain, because caffeine is wanting to keep us awake, okay? Keep us alert. And when we have a bio, uh, a neurochemical that's draining away to allow us to sleep, it creates a uh, challenge within our brain, okay? So we are chemically driving um, a shift in, within our uh, chemistry of our body to keep ourselves awake despite what our body wants to do. And if we do that over and over and over and over, um, you can see how that can impact our health and well being because we're not tuned into what our body needs, we're tuned into what we want uh, and are ignoring um, the need for our body, which is rest and recovery. Okay, so circadian rhythms they <clears throat> determine your alertness rhythm throughout your day. Okay, so your alertness spikes higher in the morning. So it's real high in the morning when you wake up. It'll dip in the afternoon. It'll rebound slightly um, towards the evening. And then it slowly wanes throughout the evening. Okay, so your circadian rhythms are uh, impacted by internal components. So it can be shaped by genes and proteins. Uh, and then external, which is light stress in our daily routine. And so um, certainly there's a whole study on epigenetics, which uh, is how you can turn genes off and on to create a genetic expression for health and well-being, okay? Uh, and lifestyle plays a massive role in this. Uh, and where we really want to focus on is well, certainly our lifestyle and our behaviors that we take on that can turn on a great sequencing of genes that can impact the internal component of circadian rhythms. Um, but the bigger component that we can influence is the external. So how we're getting light, how can we manage stress? What is our daily routine that supports a healthy circadian rhythm? When we're consistent with that, that can oftentimes impact the internal expression. Okay, so we're really focused right now on the external. So why is sleeping important when we look at what's happening in the body? So first, I want you to think about when we are awake, it is a catabolic process within our body. And catabolic literally means breaking down, okay? So um, when we are awake, there are a lot of um, influences and uh, stressors that are impacting how we move through life. And that is a stressful um, can be very stressful and it breaks us down over time. Sleep is an anabolic um, process which builds you up. So you think about this in terms of rest and recovery. So sleep is an elevated anabolic state. It heightens the growth and rejuvenation of your immune system, skeletal system, and muscular systems. Sleep rebuilds and keeps you youthful. Now understand a catabolic and anabolic uh, state are, are happening all the time. You know, your body's breaking down, then it's going in to build you back up. But we know that sleep is highly anabolic, and that is when rest and recovery happens. So, I mean, we all know and have experienced what life is like when we get poor sleep. Sleep reduction is literally brain drain. We have drained our brain. So uh, our parietal and prefrontal cortex Prefrontal cortex is executive function that allows us to make goal 
oriented, um, do goal oriented tasks, make uh, decisions, um, you know, really have executive function in our day to day life. So um, when we don't get sleep and we have a drained brain, our prefrontal cortex and our parietal uh, cortex loses 12 to 14 percent of their glucose when you don't sleep. So they're not getting it's not getting the brain's not getting its proper nutrition. So these are areas of thinking, distinguishing between ideas, social control, and being able to tell the difference between right and wrong. Uh, so certainly um, massive impacts with, you know, the executive com uh, function component, but also um, the behavioral component of how we fit in with our world around us and our ability to determine, you know, right and wrong. Uh, so those are big things. They, they're big things for adults You think about, oh gosh, that's big things for kids too. That's why kids need lots of sleep. And this there's a super cool system called your glymphatic system. So you think about the lymphatic system in the body. That is um, where your uh, the lymphatic system is in charge of pulling any excess fluid. Um, it's a big part of your immune system where if your immune system packages up any bacteria or viral uh, tissue, tissue or any anything um, waste wise to be uh, eliminated from the body that's happening within your lymphatic system. Okay, so it pulls and it drops it into the kidneys and moves it out of the body. Well, your brain has its own system called your glymphatic system, and this is the waste disposal system and it makes room for new growth and development. So what we see during sleep is that your glymphatic system becomes, becomes 10 times more active than during wakefulness. And we see that during sleep, your brain cells reduce by 60% to make waste removal more efficient. So this is why sleep is so important. Not only is our brain cells reducing uh, in size to allow for waste removal to happen, but there's also that anabolic process, that buildup process for uh, recovery to happen from a full day of work. Uh, so really important for this to happen. So let's get into some sleep basics. Number one, we know that circadian rhythms are massively influenced by light, okay? Uh, you think back on <clears throat> when our circadian rhythms really developed uh, was with the sun, right? Our day started with the sun and it ended with the sun. Uh, and so <clears throat> light massively impacts um, the rhythms of our body. And so number one, when you are supposed to sleep, it should be dark, okay? So is your room dark? That is, um, do you have blackout curtains? Um, do you have... You know, if, if you have any anything plugged in, is it a um, low level light, uh, you know, that doesn't influence the circadian rhythms? Uh, is your room cool? We used to think the sweet spot was 68 degrees. Uh, according to, not to look where I got this uh, from what book, but according to this author, he said the sweet spot is 65 degrees. So it should be much cooler um, in our bedroom. For us to sleep, uh, sleep soundly. And is your bedroom cluttered or distracted, uh, or distraction free? If we've got clutter and chaos going on around us, it is oftentimes it uh, reflects internally the the clutter and chaos we feel inside. And so, if we take care of what's around us and start to declutter our bedroom and make it a sanctuary, it can certainly mirror um, and help us be feel more at peace and feel like a sanctuary inside, inside our body. Is your phone in the bedroom? It certainly should not be in the bedroom, should never be <laughs> underneath your pillow, should never be on your uh, side table. Your phone should be out of the bedroom. You do not wanna be getting distracted by any type of noise, sounds, buzzes, um, you know, that's going to wake you. Uh, and certainly the light that your phone emits is not, is not healthy light. So. Uh, and you look at the electromagnetic fields that is emitted by your phone. Um, there's a ton of research on that uh, that should just not be in your bedroom. So get that out of your bedroom. 
And then do you know your sleep data? There's lots of, um, I think there's the uh, Aura Ring. There's, um, I know Apple Watches, Fitbits that kind of monitor if your sleep data. And so if you can see what your sleep rhythm is night to night and see, are you are you sleeping through the night? That can certainly give you a better understanding of uh, perhaps where to start in terms of um, improving your sleep, your sleep basics and your circadian rhythms. Okay, so sleep tip number one. Your circadian rhythm is just that, it is a rhythm. So no matter if it's a weekday or a weekend or um, a holiday or not, you are waking up at the same time every day. That is going to help sync up your rhythm uh, no matter what. So uh, if you can wake up the same time every day, this is going to uh, maximize your consistency of the rhythm that you're on, okay? Um, I don't think I need to say anything more about that. Sleep number, tip number two, light. Exposure to light right away in the morning. That is the best thing. If light is what's influencing your circadian rhythms, you need to be exposed to light. And so uh, ideally that is with the sun. And also it is uh, <clears throat> the sun without sunglasses on, <laughs> okay? Uh, if we're wearing sunglasses all day, that's shielding a healthy um, light that our brain needs to start creating um, the proper neurochemicals for awake and sleep. And so if we're blocking out specific UV light, then our brain doesn't know that it needs to actually create uh, the neurochemicals, number one, for awake and sleep, but number two, it needs to know that it's, that you are in sunlight. And so it needs to make sure it's got healthy protection of um, melanin in the skin. And so if we're wearing sunglasses, a lot of the times, and we're not getting that UV light directly into our eyes, it's telling our brain, oh, we're, we're having sunlight exposure. We need to make sure we have proper melanin levels um, to protect our skin. We can see that we're actually burning our skin um, because of um, not giving our eyes the proper uh, UV light. So there's multiple layers here. Uh, but we need light exposure and we need light without any type of filters, including sunglasses. And it is really much more challenging uh, during this time frame uh, of the season changing, the days getting shorter. Uh, the days are getting shorter and yet the demands are still the same. And so that's where you can consider getting a sunrise alarm clock. That is where the sunrise alarm clock will mimic the sunrise. And so it starts at a really low light level to a high light level. Um, and so you're waking up by light, not by noise and not in a dark room. So something to consider, especially when we're uh, looking at the shorter, the shorter days of, of the season. Sleep tip number three, stop caffeine consumption at 2 p.m. So the half-life of caffeine is five hours. That means that it takes 10 hours to totally get out of your system. So if you should be, you know, sleeping by eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night, you don't want to be drinking any caffeine uh, late into the afternoon or evening, uh, because that is, again, going to impact the biochemical component of that homeostatic sleep pressure and keep you up to not really listen to your circadian rhythms. Uh, so, I mean, this is an easy one to stop caffeine consumption at 2 p.m. Okay, sleep tip number five, stop screen time at least two hours before bed. We need to reduce your artificial light exposure, which interferes with your body's rhythm. As we know, circ circadian rhythms are massively impacted by light. So as it's getting darker out, if we're still exposing ourselves to light uh, and artificial light, it's not going to set the right markers for our body to know, okay, we need to start winding down. We need to start relaxing. We need to start getting ready for sleep and, and sleepy time. Um, for you to be on a TV or to be on 
you know, any type of technology and then shut that off and just think, okay, I'm going to be ready for bed. You haven't allowed your body the appropriate amount of time to really wind down and relax. So some people have a challenge with falling asleep at night because they're exposing themselves to artificial light all day. And when they shut it off and it's dark out, they think, oh, I should be sleepy. Um, but you need to allow the the rhythm to occur. You need to allow, allow the uh, uh, chemistry to take place to help your system wind down. So the culprits of you know artificial light are fluorescent and LED lights, TV, cell phones and tablets, computer screens, electronic screens like gaming devices. So it's really setting these aside two hours before bed. And something to consider, you know, again, it's it's getting darker earlier. But when you have those, you know, long, um, long days, uh, I would consider dimming your lights closer to bedtime. Um, you know, dim the lights, prepare your body to, okay, this is where we wind down. This is where we slow down for uh, the night. You can consider using red lights. If you look at cockpits, cockpits and airplanes or submarines, they're using red lights. Uh, that's because there is less strain. Uh, it's non-glaring. Um, <clears throat> or you consider candlelight. I don't know about you, but candlelight can, yes, be very romantic, but also be very um, cozy, comforting. And again, that light just has a calming and peaceful effect. Uh, so if you can dim the lights and, uh, and support, again, your system moving into a different type of... Um, you know, state to be in a, a place of recovery and rest and peace and wind down, um, you know, it just requires intention of creating and setting the space. Um, and I guess, you know, when I just talk about those things, uh, you know, I find that our traditional or standard American lifestyle is not really setting us up to um, be in rhythm when we're supposed to be awake and when we're supposed to be asleep. Uh, you know, we we stay up late and we watch, we are an entertained uh, consumer. You know, we like to be consuming or watching or being entertained. Uh, the activities that require less um, at nighttime, be more engaged with who we are and who we are with, um, that can be wonderful, but it requires a lot of intention because um, it's easy to get into the rhythm of wanting to be entertained, uh, wanting to be checked out, uh, needing to get work done. Um, you know, just because it's an eight to five day doesn't mean that, you know, we have access to work at any time. Uh, so certainly I know people are working well into the night when they should be shifting gears. So it does take a lot of intention, but the impacts of that will be massive if you choose to do so. Um, again, if we go back to this original slide, if you want life to look like better relationships and longevity, lower levels of inflammation, enhanced function of your entire body, better balance, lower risk of disease and cognitive decline, better memory, better skin, more youthful appearance. If you want those, that requires intention. Um, and lastly, I said I would end where, with where I started. Beware of daylight savings. Um, <clears throat> again, 40 minutes, just one hour or 40 minutes less of sleep, we see increased rate of strokes within the first two, daylight, two days of daylight savings time transition. People with cancer are 25% more likely to have a stroke. So people with cancer who are more immune, um, less resilient, uh, their immune system is, you know, depending on if they're going through treatment or not, their immune system is battling across multiple lines. I mean, they're just... Your immune system doesn't have the resiliency and the response time, um, you know, that it would if you don't have cancer. So, I mean, those people who are, who are less resilient have a much higher likelihood of experiencing a stroke. Um, 
you know, greater negative health effects in the following days. Uh, and so, you know, we really have to prepare ourselves for daylight savings. Uh, certainly those families who have small children understand the detrimental effects of changing the rhythm. So, you know, within the first, I would say one to two weeks prior, you're really starting to shift your schedule by 10, 15 minutes at night and in the morning so that it isn't so impactful come Sunday, November 3rd, when you are, you know, shifting by an hour. Uh, fall tends to be less, uh, less stressful than spring. The spring, you're springing forward, um, but still it has an impact. So we're right in that time frame to start planning out how you can best support your rhythms uh, coming up uh, here in the next three weeks. So I hope that uh, you gained some understanding on maybe one or a couple things, maybe a lot of things. Um, but this is really, uh, you know, sleep is massively important in terms of your health and well-being and, and longevity. And it really requires a lot of intention around your schedule. And I would even say discipline with, you know, not utilizing, you know, some of the technology you have at home to help support yourself for your best night's rest um, consistently. And, uh, you know, I'm really, I say this all the time, but it is a really an honorable thing that you show up to listen to our workshops. Uh, it's really an honorable thing that you are showing up in a chiropractic office consistently to support your highest expression of health, to support a healthy spine and healthy structure. Just like we talk about sleep in terms of consistent, healthy sleep helps for recovery and a body that can um, you know, manage stress on a day-to-day -day level because it's allowed for recovery at night. Chiropractic consistently done over time, over years, and over the decades is really setting yourself up on a different trajectory in terms of your expression of health. So when you are consistent with your health practices, and chiropractic is massive because it takes stress off of your brain and nervous system for you to be better adaptable, more resilient. Um, you know, I, I never want to dilute that down because you getting chiropractic care uh, plays a massive role in your expression of health and your ability to be more resilient. You add in a consistent sleep schedule, man, powerhouse. <laughs> so I appreciate that you're here. Uh, this is a big time of year for us. We've got in, in two or three weeks, the first week of November, uh, our patient appreciation week. And that's where we give back to our community. Dr. Chris and I have uh, a huge mission to support a healthier, more informed community. Uh, a community that chooses to be healthy, that chooses to, um, <clears throat> to be intentional and disciplined in their choices when it comes to taking care of their bodies, not waiting until there's a fire or there's an emergency, but um, bypassing those because they're consistently taking care of themselves. We're growing healthier children. So our goal is to, and we need your help. This is not a, my practice. This is not Dr. Kristen's. This is our practice. This is your practice just as much as it is ours. And so we need your help to really grow the health of our community. So that is a week where you can refer your friends, family in, and they can get their initial visit, history, consult, exam, x-rays done at our expense entirely. There is no pressure. It is just a time for them to get checked to see if chiropractic is the right um, step for them. Um, the worst thing we can hear is, man, I wish somebody told me about this. I wish I would have started this earlier. Um, that's the worst thing we can hear. So when you share and plant those seeds, you're giving that person or those people an option or a choice. Okay, and that's all that we ask. Uh, thank you for being here. I love and appreciate you. Um, you guys are what makes Monarch, Monarch Family Chiropractic, Monarch Family Chiropractic. You are the community that we so love and value. Uh, we'll see you in the office, and I look forward to hearing your takeaways. Certainly, you can comment below um, and, and write a takeaway sheet here in the office, but we want to hear your takeaways, okay? Dr. Maya Kin of Monarch Family Chiropractic, and we will see you next time.